Today I'm going to be looking at the disposable camera LoRa for Flux AI and I'm using the Replicate.com platform to access this. Now you might see two screens up at the moment, like a split screen. Let me just quickly explain what I'm doing here because um, I think it's the best way to look at these LoRas. Is on the left hand screen here that I'm moving around, that's the LoRa already opened up. And on the right hand side, we've got the vanilla version of Dev and um, Flux Dev at the same time and what i've done is i've broadly synchronized the two um, general settings aspect ratio and such and so then when we try the lauras out we're going to be able to generate simultaneously on the normal dev version and see what the difference between them is so it'll give you a live before and after so i'm going to start here with a prompt i've got on my other monitor i'm just going to copy and paste it across but I've got to bear in mind in the um, LoRa here, the disposable camera LoRa, it's got a trigger word, which is STL. Make sure to include it in your prompt. So I'm just going to paste in my, my custom prompt, which starts with a photo of her. So I could take the word photo out because I've already got it at the start. So I've left their portion, including the, the trigger word intact. Photo in the style of STL. Well, you can read it there. Short pics of brunette hair. And I've got a sign with some text on it as well saying I love flux. So I'm now going to take that and I'm going to paste that into the dev model as well. But I'm going to take the STL out because it's not relevant to that and it will just confuse it. So it will just be photo of a 30-year-old um, woman with short pixie brown hair, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to click run on this one. And I'm going to click run on the vanilla dev version. And I'm going to just... Cut this bit out and I'll join you back in a second when both of them are finished. Okay, so they both finished and it's worth noting that the original dev version on the right hand side did finish quicker, uh, quite notably quicker than the other version, but that's kind of to be expected. So let's just look at the initial results. Now these aren't seed matched, so they, they are going to be different angles and different compositions anyway. What we're looking at here is the overall overall look and you can definitely see that the images on the right hand side here, which is the normal dev version of Flux, they definitely have more of a generic sort of Fluxy AI look. And you, you, most of you all know what I mean by that. And on the left side here, they, they definitely have a more authentic photographic look. I don't know whether it's quite disposable camera um, level um, because that would probably indicate a bit worse image quality for a lot of people. But as a starting point, without any further experimentation, I think these are these are all good images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to down click it on these here to just download them. I'm going to download these and put them all up on the screen next to each other as a comparison um, towards the end of the video, um, just so you can see full screen what they look like next to each other. OK, so that's an interesting one. So I'm going to do try another prompt now. I've got a few prompts here that I use. Um, for different reasons and so this one i'm now going to rerun it with this prompt photo in the style of stl of a happy gray british short hair cat eating a big bowl of breakfast cereal at the kitchen table there is a glass of milk and a newspaper all right so i'm going to paste that across the other side and i'm going to run this but this time i'm not going to pause the video i'm going to run it and let you see real time how quickly these generate so i click run on that side and i'll click run on that side um and what I'll do in a second as well out of interest is I'm going to take the seed that from one of these and actually apply it to the other and rerun the image just to see how much it varies when we lock the seeds. You can see that the original Flux Dev has generated very quickly. Um, but bear in mind, when you use a LoRa, it has got to like preload the LoRa into its, you know, into its current process. So there is a delay with it having to load the sort of LoRa in in the background as well. So that probably explains the majority of the difference. OK, so we've got some good results and we've got a little bit of a problem here. So on the um, on the disposable camera LoRa, you can see in the top image, it looks a bit squashed. It's sort of, it's the aspect ratio looks like it's got messed up a little bit. Um, but, you know, I've not seen that very often. So that's, I would say it's a more occasional glitch than anything else. And the other images look good. They're, all the images look good. The disposable camera ones definitely 
have a little bit more there's like the focus drop offs a bit more natural and and it just looks a bit more authentic the cat itself is not going to vary too much because the um, Laura won't have been trained on cats. They've been trained mostly on people. So that's why I like using this in my comparisons because it's always good to throw like an animal-based um, one into the into the mix. So these both look pretty good. And um, I wouldn't say there was as much difference between them as there was in the last, uh, the last shot. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the seed here. So we go down to the log page at the bottom, the log section, using seed 2229. Now I'm going to paste this into the seed column of both of these. So we're going to run. We're just going to see if at all they synchronize between themselves a little bit more in terms of the the um, composition. They probably won't because the Laura is, you know, it's running completely independently. Um, well, not independently, but the Laura's got its own pathway of working compared to just vanilla sort of flux dev. So I wouldn't expect it to. Um, come up with the exact same images. So on the right hand side, because I've used the same seed as the original, I would expect that to be the same as that generated, and it is. Um, that's a good way to use seeds, by the way. So you can then make small changes to the prompt and you're sort of iterating on the same image. And now we're just going to wait quickly for it to load on the left hand side and just see what we get from this disposable camera, Laura, again. Okay, this time, um, using the seeds, you can see it's actually the top image. It is it is very close in terms of the overall composition. It's got the glass of milk on the same side. The bowl is on the same, sort of the same position roughly, and the folded newspaper open. Um, and actually, this one looks a bit more authentic than the previous one. There's a bit more of a visual difference to me in terms of how more real, quote-unquote, this image looks of a cat with the cereal. We've got the same problem on the bottom one of it being squashed though. Now that's easy to fix in um that's easy to fix in an image editing software. Um but I won't go into that now. Um it's kind of so the bottom one's kind of similar. It's got the glass and the bowl in similar places with the newspaper in the right place. So using the seed did keep a lot more consistency than um than I initially thought it would between the two models. So I'm just going to save these again. I've got it set so that I'm just clicking them and it's saving it straight into my straight into my um, inbox. Now I'm going to try another one, which um, last last example, and I like using this one because it's a complete fabrication. We've got one that was kind of realistic, one with an animal doing something slightly unusual, and now I've got one that's completely sort of fabricated. So Pikachu playing an electric guitar. And this one's intentionally very stripped back and lacking in detail so that when I test it on the Laura's going forward, um, we're going to be able to see if any more detail is added by the Laura itself that I haven't specified. So photo of Pikachu playing the guitar. Let me go and clear out those seed values just so we're not, um, not preloading it with anything. And... Right, let's click run on those. Okay, so that's finished. Let's have a little look. Okay, so that's interesting. So the disposable camera Laura, which just to remind you is on the left, this is sort of rendered out Pikachu as in the top image. It's almost as a um, either like a CGI um, type sort of effect. It's looking more of a generated effect, um, like a 3D render. And underneath that, it's created it almost as a plushy toy, sort of with a real f photograph in like someone's house or something. So you can see the very typical front-on-lit sort of disposable camera, personal camera kind of effect. So that's quite interesting. Again, two different effects. Um, and if you compare it on the right-hand side, on the normal Flux Dev version, um, the top one is definitely more illustrative, even though it, ha it has got some more real elements. It's a bit of a mix of sort of illustration style and sort of photographic elements, and the bottom one looks more just like a um, like a, a high quality digital illustration or like a three D render kind of thing. So again, between these two, there's definitely a big difference. Even though they're not the intended use, probably there's still a big difference using these two. So I've got no doubt that using the disposable camera Laura can actually bring any of your um, prompts into more of a real world sort of photography 
style um, without having to change your prompt and your settings too much. 